When you hear the phrase vulnerable leader, what does that mean to you? What comes to mind? You need to be worried about everything. In life, nothing is easy. You're going to have to be vulnerable to succeed. So if you're not prepared to admit that, you will never be successful. So to me, vulnerability is actually an asset. People that are not prepared to be vulnerable, they may have a platform, but they won't have it for long. When you think about vulnerability, when you hear the phrase vulnerable leader, what does that mean to you? What comes to mind? So to me, vulnerability is actually an asset. I, I think that uh, in order to succeed, you have to look for the challenges. I, there's, I can't believe that there are too many situations where things are just perfect and you don't have to worry. Um, yeah. You know, I'm not clinically... Uh, um, neurotic, but you know, Andy Grove's concept of uh, the paranoid survive, I don't accept yeah. it 100% that way because I wouldn't want to be viewed as paranoid. But I think there is some essence of truth in there, and that is that you need to be worried about everything in life, nothing is easy. Okay, so it sounds like what you're saying is vulnerability is, I mean, if you had to put like one sentence around it. Um, how would you define it to somebody who's not familiar with the concept? Well, first of all, I don't think vulnerability is a negative. I yep. think as a leader, you cannot be arrogant. You have to determine uh, the pros and the cons of any major decision because most major decisions are in the world of ambiguity. So I would say vulnerability is the concept of self-doubt in a situation that is complex. Interesting, self-doubt. Um, and so self-doubt meaning like you should have some self-doubt if you're in a, an important decision, moving in a strategic direction. So vulnerability for you is all about kind of questioning uh, and being unsure. Yes, uh, you know, of course they allude to, I try to make as few decisions as possible because that's why you have management. Uh, but when things are brought to me uh, as a CEO, it's usually something where it's not one way or the other. It's a 50-50 decision. And uh, in such a case, you have to doubt. You have to think. You have to ask questions. Yeah. Of course, as a leader, periodically, you'll be given an opportunity to decide against your team because you think it's the right thing. And in that kind of situation, you're vulnerable because your team yeah. is saying one thing, you want to do another thing. So it's all about doubting and not being super confident. What about a time when you personally felt vulnerable as a leader uh, with your team or with the people that you work with? Oh, multiple times in my career. Of course, uh, as an individual, I was born in South Africa and coming to the United States, to uh, New York, and uh, just opening up shop, you can imagine, that was quite a bit of a change. And um, then I was mad, made the first CFO of Henry Schein. Granted, it was a small company, but I'd never been a CFO. Um, and I didn't even know in the, in the 80s how you borrowed money as a company. And then the biggest yeah. loan I had was a $2,000 loan on my Chevy. So. I had to go banks, meet banks and raise money. Um, then um, in 1989, I was faced with a tragic situation. The then CEO, Henry Schein, Jay Schein, suddenly passed away. He had cancer, it was a tragedy. I was 39 years old, I was an accountant. And I was asked by the fam family to run this company. And oh. uh, there were two businesses. There was a pharmaceutical business and a distribution business. We spun the pharmaceutical business off and the dental and the distribution business were not making money. So together with a team of people, we developed a strategy. Some of the family members with the shareholders at the time said, this is crazy. Others said, we'll back it because Stan, we think he knows what he is doing, but he's new to this job. He's young. And you can imagine, I put my neck on the line and yeah. we implemented it. Uh, yeah, all the way to t current times when we're uh, now 
manufacturers of uh, devices. It's pretty vast. I never made a device. In fact, I never got through high school physics and chemistry. So here we make products today that are heavily regulated. It's a pretty vulnerable position to put yourself in as an individual. How much of vulnerability do you think is sharing about you as a person? Uh, your personal struggles, talking about your family, your passions, all that sort of stuff. I mean, do you do that at work as well? Yeah, I mean, I, you've got to doubt yourself all the time. So I feel in any decision, there's vulnerability. I'll tell you, on a personal side, we brought up our kids to um, believe in social responsibility. And they took us seriously. So yeah. my youngest son at 14 said he was going on a mission to Nicaragua to work with young kids. And there was a teacher involved. Um, it was a pretty scary decision to let him go. And then at 17 years old, um, the UN asked these kids at this high school to, uh, to, to, to develop quite a good model in Nicaragua, to take this model to Africa. And the school board at the school said, no, it's too risky to go to Africa. Um, I'm not sure if it's more risky to, then to go to Africa than to Nicaragua, but and I, it's another whole chapter to why I thought they said Africa was no good, but Nicaragua was good. And at 17, my son said he wants to go to Africa and he wants to help uh, this community in Ivory Coast build a school. Uh, pretty scary for parents. And I personally felt quite vulnerable. But if you teach your children to pursue values and help with the underserved, you better live it out and set an example. If they want to do something to do that, you can't stop them and say, oh, no, no, that's not safe. Pretty vulnerable time in my life and yeah. my wife's. Speaking of vulnerability, you know, one of the big concerns that a lot of people have out there is how can I be vulnerable at work without being perceived as weak? Like, how do I ask for help? How do I admit I don't know how to do something? How do I do that in a way without... Oh, a, big, like... a big mistake for a leader. Uh, I think uh, authenticity is key. Showing humbleness and passion is key. And in order to show those specific uh, traits, you have to be vulnerable. No other way to put it. So, um, what if, if you're, you're not scared? vulnerable, <laughs> if you don't feel vulnerable, you can't be successful. So what if you're scared to, to do that stuff because you think, uh, oh, you know, somebody's going to use it against me and try to bring me down. Um, what do you say to people who are scared of vulnerability? If you're not, if you, firstly, you're going to have to be vulnerable to succeed. It's, it's not possible not to be. I mean, you can't be sure that, that every decision you make is right. And most tough decisions in business whether it's as a public company or an entrepreneur, have ambiguity yeah. in the decision-making process. So if you're not prepared to admit that, you will never be successful. And it's actually so academic. Because if you don't show your humbleness and your vulnerability, you won't make it. Yeah. So people that are not prepared to be vulnerable, that, they may have a platform, but they won't have it for long.